Hi everyone, uh, welcome to ELI, the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship. And today we have with us Mr. Vamsi Kote, who is the founder of Sintizen, uh, which provides customer onboarding solution to banks, fintechs, and insurance organizations. Hi Vamsi, welcome to ELI. Hi, good evening. Very good evening. I would uh, request you to introduce yourself to our audience. Uh, hi everyone, uh, myself, Vamshi, co-founder and CEO of Sintizen. We are a startup uh, based out of Hyderabad. We mainly deal with uh, digital identity for BFSI clients, mm -hmm. mainly the banking, uh, non-banking, as well as stocks and insurance companies are our uh, major uh, clients. So we generally uh, help them to perform their uh, KYC checks of their customers in a digital way. Okay. So, uh, so for any kind of regulatory business, uh, wherever there is a need of uh, performing an ID check as per the regulation is where we generally work on. We perform more than 10 million identity checks on a daily basis across different uh, uh, segments and customers. Uh, that's, that's something unique to us. Yeah. Okay. So one thing I'm curious uh, before we dive deep into your venture, one thing I'm always curious, why do banks do KYC even today? Since you have everything online, they can simply fetch the information from everywhere and uh, not do the KYC. Can you give us a context on that? Yeah. So basically KYC for any bank is a regulatory requirement for them to understand because there's a lot of uh, money laundering uh, uh, regulations also comes into the picture. We are operating certain money uh, through the banking channels. So this high requirement to maintain uh, who, where are the whereabouts of the customer, who he is, where he is from, from a trusted and digital means. As you said, the data collection standpoint uh, where you are saying like the data is already available, they can pull it from different sources. Uh, certain technology is already available on those lines, uh, whether it is CKYC platform, wherein you, uh, if you are a customer of ICICI Bank, mm -hmm. and then if you are going and trying to open a bank account in State Bank, mm -hmm. uh, so State Bank can directly request the CKYC platform to uh, send your details, which has been uploaded from ICICI. So it is basically collaborating, and then uh, it's like a given share model. They will contribute their customers info as well as they will uh, uh, consume whenever there is a need uh, of a customer's KYC from the central repositories. Mm -hmm. So certain sharing models are already in place uh, from various means and uh, uh, the digital trust is always comes with certain uh, uh, consent angle uh, wherein if we are operating your KYC you have to actually give your consent that yes, you should be aware of what you're doing. So right. it's always a consent driven approach is needed. And it's a regulatory requirement to know uh, whose money it is, how it is getting operated. So KYC is, is the next big thing that's going to happen. Yeah. Got you. Having said that, uh, through your products, can you tell us which are the different problems you are solving for a bank or any customer for that matter? Yeah, so the exact problem statement that we generally solve for a bank is the onboarding journey of a customer. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, down the line before 2013 and 2012, if someone is visiting a branch, the bank will ask your passport size photo, they'll ask your ID proof photocopy, mm -hmm. and they'll ask your address proof photocopy. Mm -hmm. Today, if you take a bank account or a SIM card, they'll just ask your national ID number that is Aadhaar, and mm -hmm. they will just ask your fingerprint scan or your retina scan or an OTP from where all your details will be fetched out uh, directly. So that's the transformation that we also uh, built, we, we built for the our clients, uh, wherein from a paperless journey uh, to, uh, 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 from, from a paperless journey to a digital journey is something that we actually move a customer into, right? Mm -hmm. So. Imagine you are visiting a branch, you are trying to open a bank account. The first thing that you'll do is you'll give your ID proof in any means, whether it is your passport or your driving license or your uh, voter card, PAN card. So the ID checks that we do, take a photo of it, we do forensics on top of ID card to ensure that the card is not tampered or edited 
uh, then we understand the truth of that document to ensure that the trust of the document is right. We do validations okay. using the central mm -hmm. repository. Like mm -hmm. I got a PAN card. First, mm -hmm. we'll check on forensics whether this card is valid, whether this is reliable mm -hmm. from the forensic standpoint, whether it is editor or not. Okay. Then we will validate that number uh, mm -hmm. with the central repository of NSDL PAN validation mm -hmm. to ensure that this is active, this is working. Mm -hmm. Then though, we have a, a, a KYC process. Uh, we do Aadhaar checks using uh, eKYC channels. Okay. Uh, after that, there is, uh, 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 once we are done with the KYC, we'll do AML check, the anti-money laundering checks that we do, which mm -hmm. comprises of three steps again, like uh, right from uh, adverse media, we call it as AM, whether the customer is under any adverse media channels, then PEPs we call it as politically exposed, whether the customer is a politically exposed person mm -hmm. or uh, global sanctions, we'll call it as GS is whether this customer comes under any of the global sanctions list, whether mm -hmm. it is uh, Interpol, whether it is CID or CBI, all mm -hmm. kinds of global sanctions list, which ensures that the customer has been validated under the anti-money laundering uh, channels, AML uh, channels. Mm -hmm. Then the KYC is done, AML is done. Mm -hmm. Then there's a concept of alternate score to identify mm -hmm. whether your phone number is reliable, whether your email ID is reliable, mm -hmm whether it, it has been taken for a specific purpose of just consuming a credit line or consuming a bank uh, loan mm -hmm. will also be validated. After that, you have uh, uh, a certain more checks on mm -hmm. uh, digital signing. Like once you are done with everything, the agreement will be prepared and mm -hmm. you are going to sign uh, the entire agreement in a digital way. Okay. So in a way, your KYC followed by your anti-malandry checks followed by alternate score, mm -hmm. followed by the digitally signing all the documents, okay. uh, signing all the documents in a digital way, the mm -hmm. entire customer journey will be fulfilled. Okay. And for collecting the KYC itself, there are various ways, like they can perform uh, CKYC or Aadhaar based KYC. Now the concepts are much evol evolved, like there's a concept of video KYC also, like okay. the way how we both yeah. are talking here, so in video KYC, a banker and a customer will join. They will exchange data. There is a process for it, which we follow. We'll ensure the customer is in India. The customer is submitting ID proof and address proof, which are validated. Mm -hmm. The customer is a real person. He's on a uh, video call uh, with a banker, which is mm -hmm. under recording mode. Once after all of these tests are passed, mm -hmm. then to the customer can be also onboarded. So that's what we do on customer onboarding journey side of it. Yeah. So when you say customer onboarding, uh, mainly we usually talk about KYC uh, as the main part of customer onboarding in banks. But are there more uh, aspects to onboarding, uh, such as uh, educating customer about the product, uh, or uh, it can be around uh, consultative selling? Uh, so any any products you have around that? Uh, so we we don't we not only sell this for banks, but end of the day we also have a regulatory based KYC, wherein certain components can only be licensed to uh, regulated entities of uh, under RBI kind of companies. Mm -hmm. But we also have a non-regulatory stack, uh, which can be given to any other bank, a company who wants to onboard their customers mm -hmm. in a digital way, a simple way. Because for example, today our uh, customer onboarding journey mm. uh, is less than two minutes of time, mm. uh, which is highly reliable, highly secure. Imagine we are all living in a digital world. Mm -hmm. That too, after pandemic, uh, a company established in Bombay, sitting mm -hmm. in Bombay, mm -hmm. uh, they are like a BNPL product, like buy now, pay later kind of companies like Lazy Pay and all. Mm -hmm. Sitting in Bombay, with if you have a cell phone, you are able to do one, two, three things and they are giving you 10,000, 30,000 kind of credit lines to mm. utilize, right? Mm. And uh, uh, to do so, they need a lot of digital trust to understand whether the customer is real mm. or a fake person or how reliable is this customer, how accurate is this customer. To do all of these checks, we have more than 80 microservices which supports the whole amount of uh, onboarding journey process. The more critical the business is, uh, the more number of checks that will happen, but always mm -hmm. the overall onboarding journey is never uh, more than a two minute kind of journey. 
Okay. Uh, the next thing I am curious to understand is uh, how do fintech, especially those fintech uh, technology companies who empower banks and uh, other fintech companies, how do they make money? So usually when, when in you see technology companies, they either license their product or uh, they make a subscription based revenue. Uh, but uh, would like to understand how, what is the revenue model uh, for citizen and uh, companies uh, similar to that? Yeah, so we charge uh, uh, per ID check, uh, every identity check that we do, uh, we will charge our customer. There is, uh, for example, there is certain cost that is involved for uh, uh, onboarding a customer in any of the banks or NBFCs or insurance or stuff. Okay. So uh, uh, a part of it is, will be uh, contributed to us for onboarding a customer in a digital way without actually meeting the customer, we are able to help them to onboard. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the entire revenue model that we work on is it is per call per transaction uh, we can, we call or per onboarding we can say uh, mm -hmm. is the model that we work on okay. and uh, we do around uh, 10 million such onboardings every day mm -hmm. okay awesome uh would love to understand now how uh, how did you build this venture what were the series of things that you did right from day one to you know come to this stage uh, tell us about the whole story of uh, Sintizen. yeah so uh, it's a little uh, interesting thing uh, one uh, we are a mix of very traditional versus uh, the uh, incubations to startup mania that has been started in 2014 mm -hmm. we started as a uh, independent company in 2014 that time the ecosystem of uh, starting up a uh, startup and there's no incubation facilities in uh, Hyderabad uh, mm -hmm. or in Telangana as of mm -hmm. when we started uh, our company. So mm -hmm. we we planned many things. Then uh, many of the things have gone wrong as what we have planned has never happened uh, in the initial days. Then mm -hmm. uh, eventually there's a, a, a largest incubation center uh, that has been started uh, in Hyderabad, uh, which is T-Hub. Uh, in T-Hub, we... Uh, immediately onboarded, uh, I think down the line within seven months of when we started. So it's it's not about generally uh, engineering capabilities that will make you successful if you uh, start a company. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of a uh, lot of things that we should also aware of. So it's not only about engineering capabilities or product engineering that we are uh, supposed to talk. It's mm -hmm. all also for the financial engineering on how we are doing, how we are. Uh, 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 expense projections are happening how your revenue projects are happening mm -hmm. and then how your timelines are uh, being on product engineering or uh, software engineering is looking like always matters so the way that we follow the thumb rule that we follow at citizen from the last eight years of time is mm -hmm. uh, work out a plan and uh, execute it then review and retrospect mm -hmm. and then ensure that what goes wrong what's going well and do the course correction. So course correction is something that we strongly believe in. Mm. So we will make out very efficient and effective plans. And then at the execution level, there's a lot more surprises that we will get. Then we should start having certain learnings from those execution and then put them under retrospect. And then the next uh, uh, tranche of things that we are doing, mm. we will try to make far better. So today, uh, in most of the cases, our projections are going very right, whether it mm -hmm. is our engineering, whether it is our product, whether it is our finance or uh, legal. So uh, we anticipate good things, we bound good timelines and ensure things are going very rightly. Yeah. So there is no such formula that you should do this way, but it's always like do things, but do review and retrospect always. Gotcha. Uh, next question is uh, around fundraising. Have you raised fund uh, for your venture? If yes, tell us about it. Uh, uh, things like what uh, what was the interesting thing about a venture that uh, got, caught interest of the investors and uh, in, any experience of uh, pitching to investors and then failing and then going back to another investor. Tell us about it. Yeah, so we got uh, uh, invested by MasterCard, uh, the debit and credit card manufacturers so the network that we see outside the Visa and MasterCard kind of network. Mm -hmm. So MasterCard actually funded us. 
it was an interesting story when uh, we were in uh, an event in delhi on identity summit and mm -hmm. then uh, mastercard the folks also attended that event uh, because after payments uh, there are three four companies large corporations who are working on payments mm -hmm. uh, along with payments they are also working on identity uh, business moving forward so a few of their global representatives are there uh, in the networking session we got uh, uh, some time like uh, the, one of the asia pacific said uh, is there and then we someone from new york's office is also there mm -hmm. so they said like okay i have 10 minutes to talk so the moment we talk about the productization that we are thinking about and the way that we are emphasizing this product for the next few years at least for a decade down the line where we are seeing how uh, the digital identity plays a major role mm -hmm. they're well connected because they are from the same industry our uh, projection of uh, our product engineering has been mapped. They are able to relate it with what they are developing it in uh, Silicon Valley. So they said, uh, uh, are you guys looking for funding is what they immediately asked for. And uh, yeah, so once after they asked, uh, so we said, yeah, why not? If there is a good offer in place and it eventually turned into an investment for citizen uh, uh, after that. But it takes its own time because uh, for them it is a word that yeah invest on these boys to take it forward is the uh, is, is the sentence that uh, uh, Mr. Bob Rainey actually told that day uh, from New York's office. After that, the kind of diligence that the investors do, it's it's a very uh, healthy and holistic uh, habit of maintaining a lot of things at par with the investor uh, expectations from day one. Don't consider it as uh, we are a startup and we can do uh, anything uh, and everything as we want. Mm -hmm. If you start habituating a very uh, organized way of doing things, that will really help you when you are really raising uh, the fundraise. Yeah. So because I'll tell you, when we are raising our first round, uh, our customer service team or the business operations, we call it as, has been audited by the uh, Singapore office. Mm -hmm. Then our finances and everything has been audited by the Dublin office. Mm -hmm. Our technology has been audited by their New York office. So before investing, they have done a lot of due diligence. I'm not saying every investor will do that. But yeah, the more uh, organized you are, the better prepared you are. Mm -hmm. It is very easy for you to do this fundraising things. And uh, in this journey, uh, it, it takes around six to eight months for us to crack, the to get the fund in our bank account. Mm -hmm. But whereas to convince the investor, it, does, it takes at least 10-15 minutes to say yes or no. But mm -hmm. keeping this aside, uh, we also have the, uh, attended a couple of investor meetings. Uh, one thing that we observed is um, investors will change your business model a lot. They will change in a good sense. I mean, they mm -hmm. will refine it. They will put you hundreds of questions. They will put you, Bamshi, how are you going to handle that? How are you going to handle this? Mm -hmm. Your business model is all about a rupee business. Uh, it's not scalable across the world. So mm -hmm. uh, the moment we may be trying to uh, uh, counter those points with certain answers, but mm -hmm. we know that there are certain things to be corrected. Do course correction in our strategy itself to answer each and every question of uh, the investor. A few of the investors will say you are... Uh, uh, business is regulatory risk is there. We diversified. We went cross border, cross country. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody will say we are a rupee versus dollar business. We also have uh, uh, de risk that by enabling the dollar business. So we we uh, then we are such a very centric KYC company, but we now diversified and say like we are a digital identity company with mm -hmm. uh, helping in customer onboarding process. So these are something which. Uh, you can easily uh, got to know as on when you start raising funds. Mm. It's not about just uh, for the sake of money that you're going to uh, invest us, but the overall process will teach you a lot of things. Whether it is to refine your business model, whether it is to get organized, whether to keep a sense on your targets. Uh, if, if you are self-funded, uh, your target is your thing. If Even if it's happening, not happening is a different story. When investors are in place, they will give you the maximum energies to ensure that everything goes rightly. There's a lot of reviews that will happen. Mm. Eventually, you will be so cautious. You will be so sensible from various means to go everything right. 
So to summarize, if you ask me from the investor standpoint, one, they will help you to refine your uh, strategy and pitch, uh, which will be more efficient. Two, mm -hmm. fundraising uh, will also help you to uh, make yourself organized and mm -hmm. to set up good targets. A target is not only a target from the investor standpoint, but that's also for your business, for yourself. Mm -hmm. And three, uh, it's it's good to have a, I mean, understand from what sense, like the, what are the objectives of the investor? Uh, whether he is he going to be a good sink for the company uh, are they going to be of any help not only from the funding raising standpoint but mm -hmm. also from expanding your business complementing your business how they are going to help you will definitely uh, be of a good help so so uh, uh, that, that's how our journey is and yeah it takes time to get yes is okay to get money from the bank account the kind of due diligence that and all we have to pass it takes six to eight months is an average time that we encountered yeah tell us about the different challenges that you have faced so far while uh, building and growing this venture okay so let me put the answer in this way one uh we, whenever we uh after we started uh, the more problems that we faced is from the regulatory standpoint. So we built something and said like, okay, now we can go to the market and start selling this. Uh, there is always a regulatory change that, that will always happen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's not a change. We can call it as an upgradation. Uh, RBI keeps on coming up with a lot of innovative ways of onboarding. Uh, they enabled eKYC, then they enabled video KYC kind of. Mm -hmm. So as on when we are ready with one stack, it's always there is certain uh, technology change or is needed because of the regulatory requirements that are coming up. Mm -hmm. So we at, at one point of time, we understood this is a never ending process and mm -hmm. we should face this challenge with a very good heart and uh, start developing things to adhere with the compliances of uh, RBI. But along with RBI, there is one big surprise that we got from Supreme Court, uh, after an Aadhaar judgment or verdict they have given, uh, mm -hmm. private, company, uh, private companies are not entitled to get Aadhaar license. Uh, we almost lost uh, uh, 14 out of 15 clients that we have. We only left with one client from the government standpoint. That's mm -hmm. where we understood like, what is it called the de-risking? How mm -hmm. we should de-risk our business and all. Okay. And, and uh, when, when, whenever uh, we, we are in the scaling phase, Scaling mm -hmm. is always a challenge, but it's a good challenge to have. Mm -hmm. uh, even the pandemic time, we are a fully contact-based technology that we are working on with fingerprints or retina scans. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of pandemic, uh, the entire business model is on toss because uh, if everybody is touching the same device, there's mm -hmm. a possibility of spreading viruses from one person to other. Mm -hmm. So we have been uh, uh, quickly turn around and uh, we built a contactless technology and facial mode and now 60% of the entire transactions that we perform has been moved on to uh, facial recognition based technology, a contactless technology. So challenges are always there and mm -hmm. yeah, solutions are also there. It's always uh, like when you are taking the right calls, mm -hmm. uh, how you are going to mitigate the risk. Uh, it's not only about building a great product, but also enterprising it, adhering to the current situations, uh, of uh, uh, regulatory compliance or other supporting factors also has to be in support to us. Mm. So we are used to uh, the surprises. We always uh, have uh, a course correction process in place to ensure to handle the challenges in a very right way. Gotcha. Uh, tell us a little bit on the go-to-market strategy that you follow, uh, uh, such as uh, you operate in a, a very slow moving uh, industry where uh, the deals take time uh, to get closed and uh, um, you know you have to build a certain wrapper with the customer before you can make a sale right uh, so any uh, you spoke about scaling up the business model can, can you tell us about any growth hacks or growth techniques that you have followed or discovered along the way which works in the b2b technology setup sure so when we are in the, in the bfsi space the average sales cycle will at least take three to nine months of time uh, for us to close one lead so we need a lot of patience 
Uh, it's not a B2C product that we can close the clients really quick. And we work with governments as well. It, it takes a lot more time to uh, uh, compete with the timelines of the governments and all. So uh, point is, uh, one, you have once you are proven somewhere uh, that you are serving for XYZ organization, it is easy for you to establish the credential of uh, your reliability and your quality when it go when you go to the other customers in place. Mm -hmm. And then second, uh, we we always would love to take challenges or uh, the client risks that are involved in place. When we worked on the projects of Telangana state government. Uh, mm -hmm. We uh, used to handle around, uh, around uh, two to three million uh, uh, kind of transactions. Uh, at the time, we 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 are the best uh, of this uh, process uh, compared to any other competitor in the market. Mm -hmm. When uh, when on the scaling mode, the other states when they are facing the similar kind of problem, their first preference is citizen because we are proven. We implemented something in the other states. Uh, which is a far scalable, reliable, and then transaction time is really, really less compared to anyone else. So they 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 have uh, handpicked us and said like, Vamshi, can you also solve the same problem for us, for our state as well? So we have done a lot of uh, acquiring of projects which are running under a uh, very slow mode. They have their own problems which are not getting addressed. Mm -hmm. All those things we have taken over over a period of time. Uh, but uh, apart from this, for the banking space, we always ensure that the uh, the right presentation has been given to the client, the right SME, the subject matter expert sitting in front of the client to give him the confidence and trust that on what we are trying to sell. Okay. Uh, also, on various BFSA forums, we, we give a lot of presentations to educate uh, uh, a bunch of gathering together in one meeting to help them out to understand what is something that we are solving. Mm -hmm. But we always ensure that we have certain USP in place uh, compared to any of the competitors. What is something which is very unique to us? Mm -hmm. What is that one, two, three problems paid? Uh, I mean, uh, is, a, is a pain point for the customer and mm -hmm. how best we can solve it. So if we can hit the nail correctly on those lines, if you are trying to sell an apple to apple kind of replica in the market today that won't sell. Mm -hmm. You should have something unique. You should be something scalable and reliable. Then though you are, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you are the uh, preferred uh, vendor of uh, many customers. Yeah. Speaking of that uniqueness, which we usually call as uh, differentiators, uh, can you? This question I forgot to ask. Uh, the technology. There are a lot of technology companies in BFS space. Can you tell us what is that one top thing that, that differentiates your company, your venture from the rest of the crowd? Sure. So the scale at which that we operate, uh, 10 million ID checks on a daily, a daily basis itself proves the uh, scalability factor on how we are doing things here uh, is always a, a talking point to most of the customers. Uh, the second uh, is mainly about how you are going to, what kind of customers that you are serving to. So we do ID checks for state governments as well. So if you ask me about a tier two, tier three cities, uh, and the even in the rural areas, if uh, a customer is able to perform a KYC transaction today, whenever a global bank or a national bank is trying to onboard us, for them, it is more of a risk-free matter. So the USPs mm -hmm. that we have with the fraud monitoring system that we have today, uh, mainly from suspicious transactions, suspicious devices, or mm -hmm. abnormality transactions, uh, business hours, non-business hours, classifications. Mm -hmm. So there is a bunch amount of uh, cyber and intelligence that we have on identity. Whenever there's a transaction that has happened, we were able to identify whether we can counter this as a suspicious transaction or not, There, uh, which is not there with many of the players in the market today. And the kind of APIs that we have, the uniqueness of APIs that we have today is more than 80 plus microservices for onboarding a customer is something which is unique. And the stitching process, someone will build a payment gateway kind of page, give it to the customer and say, mm -hmm. you can integrate it and use it for customer onboarding. But we always ensure there are 80 services mm -hmm. and now using these 80 services, you can uh, stitch a product. Mm -hmm. In the stitching work, we will always keep this customized so that 
uh, it's customer's choice. See, if it comes from ELI, you always want white and orange backgrounds mm -hmm. uh, with certain font in place. And you have a different way of onboarding that once mm -hmm. I don't want pan first, then other, then video call. I, but mm -hmm. I want everything on the video call itself. Once I don't mm -hmm. want this kind of process. So stitching process, the way that you look at things is something the customer is so specific about. Uh, mm -hmm. Where other companies, there's a fictional process that I have this. You can use it. If you want, I can match the color. So, but we are in a, in a different segment. We have a bunch of microservices. Our motivational factor today is I want our customers to use our microservices a lot. Mm -hmm. So they have to contribute the transactions to microservices. To make it happen, we will give this bouquet of suite of uh, services for stitching work. We will do it uh, much customized uh, for the customers. So that's how uh, uh, we actually uh, do it. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's our major USP, whether it comes to fraud monitoring or fraud controlling, or whether it comes to uh, uh, the stitching process thing, or whether it comes to the uh, zeroing it down, bunch of microservices. We are a one-stop store for uh, customer onboarding journey. You don't need to go for uh, one customer for e-sign, one vendor for eKYC, one vendor for AML. We mm -hmm. can provide everything as one suite to you. That's something unique to us. Got you. My final question, what is the meaning of entrepreneurship for you? How would you define the term entrepreneur? Uh, so entrepreneur is, uh, it looks like a bed of roses for the people who actually look at, uh, but yeah, there is, uh, there's a lot more when you actually jump in. Mm -hmm. I always uh, suggest uh, young young uh, entrepreneurs to start as early as possible and do enough mistakes so that they can stabilize everything uh, as soon and then move forward. So uh, don't expect happiness from all the right things that you do uh, is something the entrepreneur has to follow. It's not about just uh, innovating and innovating. Uh, all the innovations can't be enterprised always. So mm -hmm. you should... Uh, um, an, an engineering uh, guy, uh, I mean, uh, uh, from the software engineering I'm talking about, okay. a software engineer's thought process versus an entrepreneur thought process should be a little different. Mm -hmm. You should look at your balance sheet. You should understand how, when your company is going to uh, move ahead. I'm not saying your profitability from day one kind of, but yeah, mm -hmm. down the line, what is your projection towards building a unicorn? how you are going to build the company is something the entrepreneur has to look at. Whereas in a, a, a product engineering or a, a technology engineering a person will always look at innovating things and doing things differently with great performance. And as always, uh, entrepreneurs, are, life is like without saying if, else and but, you need to commit something and make things happen. That's the success. Got you. On this note, uh, we will close the session. Thanks for your time, Vamsi, and it was a great pleasure to have you on our platform. Thank you so much. Thanks, Priya. Thanks for having me here. Bye.